Kitty, and I'm using Peaceful Pines. I'm using um, this kind of tree, branchy looking one in the lights. And I'm using this kitty cat right here. When I saw this kitty cat, and even though she has a frown, I'm gonna turn that upside down. <laughs> I knew that I wanted to make her look like she was wrapped up in light. So that's what this card is going to look like. And then I was thinking about rocking around the Christmas tree and how funny it would be if this poor little cat who's wrapped up in Christmas lights was rotating around a Christmas tree. So we're going to give that a go. That's my vision. Uh, Roxy is debating on getting on the desk, so you may or may not see her. If you have been following me, for any length of time, or if you're new, let me explain to you my love of all things purple. Purple is my most absolute favorite color. It's always been my absolute favorite color. And luckily, I'm married to a man who doesn't mind that my favorite color is purple. I have a purple car. I have um, purple in every room of my house except for three. One of those is the master bathroom, and that's because we haven't done it yet. The other is his office, and the third is the dining room. So the rest of my house has little touches of purple, and three rooms have walls painted purple. I love purple. The other color I love with purple is like aqua pool party. So my craft room, the walls are perfect plum, basically, and the accents are um, a cross between pool party for the floor and then a little touches of um, Bermuda Bay, etc. My bedroom, the walls are purple and the ceiling is aqua. I mean, so I love these two colors together. I made a really, what I thought was gorgeous, Chris, oh, excuse me, Christmas card. This is how sad I am. I can't even talk. Um, last year, and I'll try to remember to link that. But, so I'm going to be using purple and aqua. So the colors I'm using, and again, remember, I'm not using any kind of Christmas designer series paper. I am using Perfect Plum and this piece of designer series paper from the designer series paper stacks. Where'd my card base go? Oh, no. I just had it. Where did it go? There it is. I threw it over here. Okay, so I have a piece of Perfect Plum that I cut at four and a quarter. I scored at um, five and a half. And this is gonna be a top folding card. I have a piece of Whisper White. Measures four by five and a quarter. This is gonna be my inside layer. I'm not gonna stamp any words on this. You're more than welcome to. And I think I've mentioned, oh, of course, in many videos that I, um, I tend to not stamp in the inside of my cards because a lot of times they either go to customers as thank yous or I tend to have big handwriting. If you've watched any of my plan with me's, you probably know that my handwriting is kind of big and pretty messy. <laughs> and I have so, a piece of the designer series paper stack that measures four by five and a quarter. I want the polka dots on top. So let me go ahead and hear this down. The reason why we're doing this step first is because we if we were using like some of our thicker designer series paper or just a cardstock, this step wouldn't really be necessary. But for in order for this spinner card to work, our um, circle that they're going to spin on, is this the wrong sheet of paper? What the heck, Misty? This is what happens when I'm working and then Roxy jumps up here and then I lose all train of thought. That's not right. Jeez Louise. Anyway, I cut it wrong because I gotta cut off. Keep it off. Five and a half, not five and a quarter. So, um, anyway, what was I talking about? Yes, in order for our spinner part to work, the base, to go around the base, it needs to be pretty strong. So, if that didn't make any sense, You'll see what I mean. <laughs> so I'm going to line this up. There should be about a quarter inch border on each side. And that's pretty daggum perfect for me. I'm going to need a touch of adhesive right here. So I'm just going to. There we go. Okay, so let me bring in. Let me go ahead and stamp first. 
Yeah, let me go ahead and stamp first and we'll just do all of it at the same time. So I have a piece of Thick Whisper White that measures, um, it doesn't matter what it measures actually. And then I have a um, scrap piece of Pull Party. I'm gonna stamp my tree in Pull Party onto Pull Party. So let me do that. Perfect. And then I'm gonna go ahead and stamp the lights. I think I'm gonna regret this, but it looks like my stamp is dirty. I was playing with this card, and this is, I don't know if you guys saw the message on Facebook. I said, once you've messed with a card for two hours and it's not working out how you want to, walk away. I actually had a completely different design in my head and using completely different color palette. I was trying to use navy and, ooh, excuse me, navy, pear pizzazz, and flirty flamingo, and it just wasn't working out how I wanted it to. So, when all else fails, go back to your tried and true. You're right or die. So I'm using the lights from that stamp set. Just like that, perfect. Okay, that's done. This has a coordinating framelit and I'll be using, this is not the coordinating framelit for that. Oh. for things I screw it all up that's okay it's just right here I think we need the big one is it the biggest one nope it's the in-between one yes yes perfect okay maybe that's why that other one wasn't working out for me it was too small okay so the next step is I'm going to put this to the side I'm going to stamp this little kitty cat I'm using basic black because I'm going to color her with a blender pen. And what I've done, you can kind of tell, is I used a pair of scissors and I just cut that ball of yarn off. You can always stamp it later if you want to. It'll, you know, it'll fit right back there. But I wanted to be able... I wanted it to look like it was lights instead of a, a ball of yarn. So I'm going to color her first and then I'm going to add her smile. So first things first, I'm going to make her have a smile. So let me zoom you in so I can show you what I'm kind of going to do here. So she already has the lines. I'm just going to borrow those lines and look like <laughs> she, she kind of smiling. She looks a little drunk. That's all right. She looks like she's got a little mustache. It'll be okay. The main thing I want you to see is how I add lights. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my perfect plum. I'm going to take the pointy end. So I don't want the brush tip. I want the other end. And I'm just going to start just like that. So I'm just going to add random lights here or there. Oh my word! 
So cute. So before I cut her out, I'm gonna go ahead and add some shimmer to the lights. Um, if you still have some of our crystal effects that would work, you could do it with our um, fine tip glue pen that will also do it. Also, that will also do it. Sorry, my my inner southern's coming out. She does that sometimes. So is it oh my word? Oh my word. I always say that some, so and so is my favorite card, but this this may end up being that way. Okay, before I go any further, I'm gonna go ahead and cut her out. And I'm gonna, I'm not gonna like fussy, fussy cut, but I'm gonna get as close as possible. Okay. Done. But before I put her to the side, two things. I'm gonna take that basic black marker and I'm gonna bring out the brush tip and going from behind, I'm gonna kind of trace this with the side of the marker. And you've probably seen people do this. And this just helps the stamped image to look finished. Look like, you know, you actually meant to cut it out, wickety wackety woo -doo. And doing it from the back helps prevent you getting it all over the front. Ask me how I know. <laughs> you guys probably know how I know. So see there? Yeah, it's so cute, she's so cute. Okay, I'm gonna add a couple of dimensionals to her back later. Let me do that later. Okay. Let me put her where I won't lose her. Right there. All day, all day. Let's bring in the big shot. And for that, I'm going to zoom out. You guys are going to see my, woo, wrong way, Mr. My messy desk. When is my desk not messy? That is really the question at hand. Okay, I'm gonna use my magnetic platform, a cutting pad, and then I'm gonna cut the tree first because we really have to work on centering that other thing. So with this one, just kind of line it up. Gonna be a little bit of extra around and so you just want to make sure that that is even the that the that is even i've had some caffeine today as you may notice so. plus like i've been thinking about this card all daggum day i'm like i need to get home so i can make my card Well, these days I will be a full-time crafter. Okay, let's bring in our little spinner. Spinner, 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 spinner. Well, it's sliding, excuse me. Okay, so you're gonna need, or we're gonna need, this one. So this one right here. And we're gonna want this probably closer to the middle. You can really decide where you want it. It's completely up to you. That looks as bad as even as Misty Levine can make it. So let's go back. Let's go back in time. We'll go this way. Big shot, done. The big shot, we are done. Okay. Oh, did that not cut all the way through? Oh no, it did. Okay. <laughs> I keep promising that I'm going to, promising nobody but myself, that I'm going to invest in those um, magnetic sheets, and I have it. And I know that I can get them for hella cheap at Home Depot. I just haven't done it. Just haven't done it. So our next step, 
So the way this is going to be, these are going to, this is going to go in the middle, and then our tree is going to go, and then our kirikatos is going to go around it. So we're going to need to add this with dimensionals. And we're going to want to make sure that we avoid this area, because that's where our thing is going to go around. So you can also use the strips, but I'm going to go ahead and just use these dimensionals because I have them handy. Just like that. Now, a good rule of thumb, I could put this in the middle, and you guys know me, I'm crooked as a jaybird. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add dimensionals, and again, I wanna focus these dimensionals in the middle of this piece of paper, and that's another reason why we used a thicker cardstock, like we made it a bit heavier using cardstock and designer service paper, rather than just the thin designer series paper because we need it to be sturdy. Okay, so a trick to this is you're gonna put this back in and then you're just gonna pop this in where it goes. And then you can just kind of push this back out and it's where where it needs to be now for the spinner part you're gonna need your kitty cat and you're gonna need two pennies and you know what she's not gonna be big enough to cover oh it's gonna be on her head that's weird hmm Okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and try it behind her head and we'll see what happens. And if I don't like it, then I'll restamp and recut her out. Our next step is we're gonna cut some dimensionals and I'm gonna cut the cut them into more of a circle. So I'm just gonna take off these two points. Just like that. And then we'll kind of round all the edges. If you have um, foam dots, that won't be such a, you won't have to do this step, but if you're using dimensional adhesive from Stampin' Up, you're gonna wanna do this. And it's important to get it in the middle of the penny. And you just put it together. And you just slide it in. It should just slide right in. So it looks like my dimensional is impeding. So I'm gonna take it off. And we're just gonna cut half of one. So I'm gonna use one of these little side ones. We just need the littlest piece. Hopefully that works. I've never made one of these before. I've never watched one being made before. So. <laughs> winging it. What's the point of watching instructions? Duh. I just want to know how to do it. Yep, I need to scoot it over. Okay, let's give that a go. We may just need that more dimension behind the behind our layers. There. 
it goes. Woo wee! <laughs> so how crazy is she gonna look if we do her head? I think it'll be fine. I'm gonna try it. We're gonna see. No, that's totally cute. <laughs> oh my word! And you could probably get away with using a dime, but honestly, it took all I could do to find these daggum pennies. Oh my word, that is so stinking cute. So now, we gotta get our tree. So I think we're going to have to chop off a little bit of it. I think it's hilarious. Totally, totally hilarious. And then she kind of sits down here. And it puts that motion. So that's cute, right? I feel like it needs to say Christmas somewhere. But I'm going to leave it as it is because I think it's hella cute. You know what? I'll probably add some <laughs> white perfect accents. Did I put those on any more crooked? Seriously, holy Toledo, Ohio. That's actually not bad right there. Over just a teeny bit, teeny, teeny, tiniest bit. All right guys, thanks so much for joining me. As always, all the links are listed in the description box down below. Don't forget that you can win, not win, if you make a $50 purchase using the hostess code, you'll get the supplies um, necessary to make these cards. And then you'll be entered for a chance to win either the Pretty Kitty or the Bella and Friends stamp set. So thank you for joining me for day four. Oh my word, we're almost done. I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye for now.